So a very common thing that you want to do in Excel is have a chart that has how many things are there by category. So here, for example, there are three ASEAN countries with a population of 0 to 10 million. There are two with a population from 10 to 50 million and so on and so on. But I mean, you know, the obvious question to that is, well, what are they? Well, a lot of people don't know how to do this with Excel, but you can actually get it to show it like this. Um, and then it becomes so much more useful. Uh, it's possible. It's not that simple. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Well, even if you're not in a chart, here we have clients at different stages of our sales funnel. Two have declined, three have accepted, two are in proposal stage, one is a prospect. I mean, who are they? That's the important question. And we could go back to our source and then have a filter. But it would be nice if we could do it as an output. Well, you can do that. You can have the names here. And then you can also have them in the chart showing like this. So that's what I'm going to show you in this video, how to do this, how to find the, what these are, and also how to make them into a chart. So my name is David Benayim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of content. So I have color coded them to make them easier. And we're going to first come out with a count of how many there are. So here it's one, two, three, two for accepted, etc. And then we're going to come up with the names. And I'm going to show you how to do it in the chart. So to do that, we're going to start with a function called countifs. Now, personally, I always choose the one with an S because it just means that you can have more criteria if you wish to. Um, and it means you just have to use one function to get there. So the first input is the criteria range. So select that and then comma, then criteria one. I know I've done it wrong, but let me show you why in a second. So if I drag it down, I get three, two, two, and then zero like that. Um, and if I don't want these borders to appear, I can hit, click here and fill without formatting, by the way, and then I just get the answers. So that's all very well and good, except it hasn't actually given me the wrong thing. There's one prospect, et cetera, et cetera. So how can I get around that? If I go to the show formulas on my formulas tab, I can see what's happening. The first one has the blue range in the right place, but as I go down, the blue range goes down with it, which is not what I want. I want the blue to always stay around this area. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do equals count if, and then my criteria range is going to be this, press F4, and then my criteria is going to be that. Close my brackets. And then if I have it with F4, I can drag it down and fill without formatting again. And then it shows me the right one. And in my show formulas now, it will always refer to the blue range. So that's great. That's count if but we're going to do it for text join. And here I'm going to say equals text join to teach you first what text join is. So text join takes a delimiter. Let's do, for example, and like that. And whenever you have text inside a function in Excel, you need to have speech marks around it like this. So ignore empty. I'm going to say true. Just press tab to lock that in or double click it or type it out. And then I have text one comma text two only text one is mandatory because the other ones have curly has square brackets around them so for text one i'm going to just click on these to get a list of the names close my brackets and then i get barry and linda and jeremy notice that they're sorted in the order of this so that's really well and good but i want this same thing to happen with criteria um let's look at what true does so right now, if I have blanks, it will skip them. But if I get rid of that and replace it with false, tab to lock it in, then I have here and, 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 and double spaces, which is obviously not what I want either. Uh, and that is key to what we're going to happen, what we're going to do for the text drawing if that we're going to manually construct. We're going to say, give me the same thing, but if this matches this, then give me the name if this doesn't match this, then don't give me the name. So I'm going to do that with equals text join like we started before. And then in delimiter, I'm going to say semicolon space and then close my speech marks. And then I'm going to say true, definitely need the true to happen in this case. And then text number one is going to be an if formula. So if this column, F4 to lock that in, is equal to this cell, like we did with countif, F4 to lock that in, then return this column, F4. Otherwise return 
speech marks, speech marks, which is the way to write blank in Excel. So close my brackets first for the if function, the red brackets, and then again for the text row function, which is the black brackets. And there I've kind of done it. So declined are uh, Linda, Holly, and Pranil. And then accepted should be Keenan and Allison. And then as I get that, let me do fill without formatting. There you go. Now I've got the ones appearing there. And now let's try changing this one to say, for example, proposal. Notice that you do have autocomplete dropdown, which I absolutely love. This is only if you are using the insider version of Microsoft 365 for now, though. Um, there you go. So even if there's none, it appears there and it appears as zero in my chart. But the moment that one of them becomes a prospect, then it does work. Then it brings it back. So that is broadly how to do it um, with text join. Notice that the true is really important here. If this was false, then it would give me this answer, which is not what I want. I want it to exclude those if that happens. Um, you also do need to have um, the dynamic arrays for these. So if you don't have dynamic arrays, i.e. if you have Excel before Excel 2021, then this approach won't work. You do need to uh, do an extra step if you have Excel 2019. Um, great. All right. So next up, we're going to look at how to do it in a chart. Now, if I select these two things and I insert a, I, I find this works much better in the horizontal bar chart like this. Um, oh, let me close that out so we can see it. And then um, I tend to clean these charts up. So I will click on that and delete, click on the grid lines and delete. And then I will right click on this and format data series. Because honestly, I mean, thin bars haven't been trendy for about 20 years. Power BI, for example, always makes them thick bars. So I always do gap width of 50 by right clicking and format data series. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a data label. Now I'm going to go straight for more options because these are the numbers. That's good, but I need more than that. What I need to do is click on here and choose value from cells. It's a new feature since Excel 2013. If you click in there, you can select this. Press OK and OK again, and then you can have it showing like that. You can click on a single one twice and readjust it so that it appears right. Or alternatively, what you can do is uh, you can get it formatted on the other side. I mean, for example, you can go here and choose the position to be inside base. This is often what I use. And then to make it more clear, you might want to make these a white color, or what you also might want to do is keep them as black, but then give them a shadow. So these, these shapes can have a shape fill in format of say white like this, but then the white, you can right click format data label shapes and then choose in fill. We're going to choose more fill colors, and then we're going to choose a transparency. This is often what I do. Like that, press OK. Now it's a little bit cleaner inside the cells. So if I right click and I choose format data labels, I can go to the separator and that's by default a comma, but I can choose other things. For example, a new line I quite like. Or another thing that I sometimes do is I'll go back to my source data and I will add on some things. So over here, instead of ending it there, I will end with an ampersand and then I will say speech marks. And then space, pipe symbol, the line, space, and then count, close my speech marks after this colon, like that. So this is saying I'm kind of joining what's in here to some other text, that, which is just this text there. So you can use this to kind of join text. I can right click there and I can choose fill without formatting. And then what I can do is if I select these, and I go to data labels and I choose value from cells. I'm going to select this range. Then I press OK. Now it's gone like that. But if I press the separator to be just a space, it looks like this, which is quite neat. Or another thing that I do, and you may have seen this in the video uh, header, is I sometimes will go to the chart design and I'll choose this one. 
And then let me recolor this one. So click on it once, click on it twice, go to format and change that to a red outline. And then go to shape effects and choose just the minimal glow. I'll go with the orange glow like this. It is actually more than the others, but you can, you can change it further in the formatting options. And then I will say that these will be aligned inside base. And then I will extend it because you can extend them. Um, I will align them in the text alignment tools like this. Extend this one as well. There you go. Now it's more or less there. Now what about if I had duplicates or if I want them sorted? Well, those things are also possible with not too much extra work using two functions. Firstly, the unique function equals unique and select a list of values. It will just return the unique set of values like this. And if you want them sorted as well as unique, you would write equals sort and then unique. These are dynamic arrays, which means that the answers return on multiple rows and or multiple columns. Um, and then if there's some text here, it gives you this spill because it's trying to intercept it. So this is a brand new family of functions that came to Excel a couple of years ago, and you can use them within your text. So let's say, for example, that um, Barry featured in the proposal two times. And let's say, for example, that Linda featured twice here, but so did Holly was also in declined like that. So here we have essentially one, two, one, and then that's three. And then we, here we have duplicates as well. Here we have none. So what you might want to do is you might want to say, well, before the if, we could say sort unique. And then we would close our brackets here before the end of text join. Press enter. And then we would get it just showing like that. You could see that it's showing me just two names, even though it's like that. And also they are sorted where possible. Now this is a bit of a nuance. So if we don't want this to happen, we can say equals if this equals zero, then speech marks, speech marks, otherwise that. And then if I drag it down, I get it to give me an empty thing over there like that. So those are some other ways you can do it. They're a little bit more advanced. In another video, I show you how you can get equals text join to appear with a text join if inside every workbook, because you can, using the new Lambda feature, add your own custom functions like this, where you can say what the limiter is and all these other things like that. Um, so if you are using this feature a lot, which believe me, I am, you can do that. You can also have a distinct count, distinct count if, and a whole load of other ones. As using Lambda, I have a whole other video about it. And actually, if you want that function just given to you, let me know because I have them lying around and I can just send it to you and tell you how to add it. So if you like this video, then my name was David and I'm and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Power BI. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want stuff like this. By the way, this is not doable in Power BI at the time of making this video, having these labels inside the chart. Thanks for watching.